Hey guys, so my name is Seth from Roscoe's Garage. Um, today I'm going to talk to you guys about the install on my uh, 1980 Corvette uh, radiator. I use the KKS uh, Motorsports uh, radiator right there. And um, I'm going to talk to you guys about the install and the process really of how that went into the car. Um, and the car is a, like I said, 1980 Corvette, uh, 5.7 V8, uh, 350, uh, it's the L48 motor. Um, it's got a 700R4 trans. Um, so the radiator I bought off eBay, I bought it for $228, I believe. Um, and it said bolt on it really said bolt on and it was going to be an easy fix with no major issues um i even hit up one of my friends uh who lives in ohio and she has the exact same car as i do and she was like yeah this is the radiator i used it was easy it was simple it was an easy fix regardless to whether or not i bought the right radiator or not which i'm like 100 percent sure i did um it was not an easy fix. It was not an easy uh, bolt-on job. It was lies. The brackets that go underneath the radiator, those were too short and I needed to gouge them out. Well, I took a measurement on the side of the radiator. So you put the radiator in, right? It's at that weird angle and they sit on brackets at the top and the bottom. And the brackets for all four corners did not, they weren't thick enough. And what the problem was, was with the welds. So the guy who was welding the radiator, getting all the, you know, it, he was weld happy. And they were fat welds. They were like the size of my pinky. And it was a pain in the ass to, to, to get in there. So I had to take those, I had to take measurements of the radiator and measure the brackets, mark them and gouge the friggin' rubber out of the, um, the brackets, then put those in there and then put it in there and then put the radiator in. But the problem was the way, another problem was with the, the way that the hose at the bottom right side of the radiator, it was rubbing against a piece of metal. I don't remember exactly what the piece was, but it might've been part of the frame or something, but the, it wasn't right. And then the issue was that the radiator I bought, they didn't supply the transmission line the adapters i had to reuse the ones off the stock radiator for my c3 and those have been sitting in that radiator for 43 years and that took forever to get out it took forever to get out they worked but what we had to do was we had to bend the um transmission line adapter and it, it so that it wouldn't rub up against other pieces of metal it was a poor poor design on the radiator we ended up getting it in but it was a poor design and it took eight hours of work me and a retired mechanic um a retired master mechanic now as far as the foam the spacers in the top of the radiator um that foam does not fit in the new radiator on top it doesn't fit it doesn't even go in there right so there's no foam in the new radiator the new kks motorsports radiator and along with the padding on the front and back of the radiator kind of where it just kind of snugs right in and bolts in uh, that padding had to be taken out as well so there's no padding on that i did have um, a bunch of different sizes of dowel foam insulation foam i used for those of you who don't know i used to work for a um freezer company and that was a big part of our job that sealed the units we were going to fabricate some some uh foam with that but it just it wasn't going to work with the design another issue with that is that we ran into the the way the radiator the left the upper radiator hose it was kind of hitting the um a part of the alternator either the bracket or the belt i can't remember so that hose had to be replaced as well an overall installation like one out of ten of how difficult the job was to do i'd say it's about a seven getting the radiator in there was really difficult because the the lower hose was whacking against a whole bunch of stuff and that's on the right hand side it was whacking against part of the uh control arm and it wouldn't get past like the uh the ac and it was like a 
pain in the ass to do. So we definitely needed two people. Contrary to what a lot of people on YouTube say, you don't need to take the hood off. Though it might be easier, it it's a it would it wasn't worth having to measure and mark and make sure the hood goes on properly and the gaps. It wasn't worth it. So we chose to just keep the uh, hood on. With two people, it really cut down a lot of um, of the labor. One person would have been really, really difficult to do that by yourself. Just getting the radiator out without, I have really nice paint, so without scratching the paint, without hitting the hood, without hitting any other components in the car, it would have been really difficult to really just, just easily pull the radiator out. So it's very helpful to have a second person. So yeah, that's my review on the KKS Motorsports radiator and the install. Um, feel free to leave a comment. I'll typically get right back to you. Um, it goes right to my phone. I do have some new videos uh, that I'm working on and coming out about a, a bike I just bought. It's a 2003 Harley 883 um, 100th anniversary edition. And yes, it still has all the badges and all the actual like real stuff that's uh, on that bike. Cause a lot of it can be fake, but that, that bike is like bone stock. Like just, just the battery's been changed and it only has like 6,000 miles on it. I just got it and the thing works like awesome. So there's gonna be some videos on that, cleaning, detailing, and just like simple repairs and stuff like that. Cause I'm still learning. But yeah, stay tuned for that and I'll have more up soon. Thanks.